Hey guys, how is it going today? So the first space blog post was posted and it seems like you guys really want me to go through it. So let's do that. Before we get started though, I would really like to say thank you to all of my subscribers and that if you are part of the 73% of my viewers that are not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I will be doing a face reveal when we hit 1000 subscribers and we are closer than ever. Thank you for doing that. Let's get into the video. First thing we get to talk about are the planets. Terrestrial planets will be one of the easiest of the planets to colonize. These are planets that you will be able to immediately colonize. They have close to the same resources as the mother planet and are very rare. There are plenty of resources to go around on these planets. Terrestrial planets will likely be your first stepping stone off of mother earth. But how far are you willing to travel? Barren planets will be the most common planet in the universe sim. These are dead on the surface, but will have plenty of resources under the surface. There will be a brand new resource on these planets called Unobtainium, which will be used to create drones and other valuable items. Lava planets will have extreme surface temperatures. These planets will need to be colonized with special technology. This might be the primary reason to have drones. Send the drones to the planet to create structures and start terraforming the planet so the nuggets are able to have a life on this planet. There will be an abundance of resources on these planets, hopefully making terraforming worth it. Ice planets are hard to manage like the lava planets, but are cold instead of hot. You will need to stabilize temperatures on this planet and melt through the icy surface. These planets will likely have a high amount of resources just like the lava planet. Toxic planets have a similar challenge rating to lava planets and ice planets, but there is a difference. The atmosphere is toxic. These planets will create a very unpleasant environment for nuggets and will require a lot of work to have nuggets on the surface. In the dev blog, they talk about their ability to create a variety of different planets. They are able to do this by designing a system that will create unique characteristics for each planet. Each planet has its unique path to terraforming, making it slightly different from planet types. Terraforming is going to be very interesting in the space age. I am excited to see how this pans out. Atmosphere drastically changes the planet for the better and improves the lives of the nuggets on the planet. With a strong atmosphere, meteor strikes will become less frequent. It will also affect the birth rate of nuggets, animal population, clouds, natural disasters, and transportation. Atmosphere is directly related to the planet's oxygen levels. With low atmosphere levels, your nuggets will be forced to use spacesuits. These spacesuits, I am guessing, will be the ones that were in an accidental release a few months ago. These spacesuits will affect mobility as they will have to constantly refill their oxygen tanks. As a planet's oxygen increases, you will begin to see changes about the planet. The colors of the planet might change and life will begin to grow on the planet. Natural disasters will return by... Meteor strikes will be less frequent, which is ideal. We have seen in the current gameplay that trees and water will affect the quality of the atmosphere. These will actively change the planet and can turn planets into dead rocks floating in space. As they mentioned, everything in the game is connected from the temperature, atmosphere, oxygen, and pollution all affect the planet. Pollution is something that we currently have in the game and seems to have minor effects on temperature. We know that machinery and factories will affect pollution levels, and this can result in a toxic polluted planet. When your planet is unbalanced, the temperature will fluctuate every year. Year by year, the planet will become colder or hotter until it ultimately becomes a lava or ice planet. Change will be gradual, and you'll have plenty of time to react by recovering the natural balance of the planet. From this, it sounds like there will be a bigger connection between pollution and temperature. This blog now goes into how to colonize planets with three not so easy steps. Step one. First, we will need to locate the planet through the observatory. This is a building that we will be able to build and nuggets will operate it to find planets and can even receive signals and distress calls from space. Step two. This step is all about preparing for the flight and getting some nuggets ready to travel to a distant planet this is actually a pretty exciting phase as you might have to pack specific buildings and resources for the planet you plan to go to. This will require some game knowledge from the player to make sure they have everything before they leave. The Cosmodrome will be used for this, this step to plan everything for your civilization ship. Step 3. You have made it to your planet, and now depending on the planet, you will have to use different terraforming buildings to claim this planet and make it livable for your nuggets. These terraforming buildings are 
terraformer, oxygen generator, hydro collider, cloud generator, and space harvester. Each one of these does a specific job to allow the nuggets to control the atmosphere and the condition to, of the planet. Also, make sure to not take too long. You will have limited resources for your nuggets to remain living. These res resources would be food, energy, water, and oxygen. The terraformer will consume resources and slowly start to restore life on the planet. This only works in a specific radius though, so you might have to make multiple on a single planet. As you might know, this generates oxygen, which will help create an atmosphere on a planet with no atmosphere. To me, it kind of looks like a vacuum. Reminds me of the scene from Spaceballs. The Hydro Collider will be used to fill lakes or even empty them if that is needed. This will potentially be useful on planets with lava, which to me sounds like you would have to drain the lava before you add water. Or you cool the lava and add water on top. I'm not entirely sure the way they are doing it. This is something we will have to wait and see on unless they release an update to how this will work. The cloud generator will use water to produce clouds, which then will rain. This is kind of interesting to me. I'm not sure how I feel about this. It seems like th with this building, you can make infinite water, but I could be wrong. We'll have to wait and see. Certain planets will possess completely new and unique resources that won't be found on your mother planet. In order to harvest those resources, you will need to utilize harvesters. These machine mining vehicles will be able to obtain alien resources and transport them back to the processing center, where they will be transformed into resources that your nuggets can use. These sound pretty interesting, and we already know what one of these resources will be, which is unobtainium. I'm excited to see what other resources they throw at us with this. All right, so it is time for the elephant in the room, drones. We finally get to see what the drones and robots look like in the game and how they will operate. To start off, it will need unobtainium to be able to create them. This means you will have to find a specific planet with unobtainium first before you create your first drone. Drones will be extremely effective on all planets. Each drone is able to move faster and carry three times more than nuggets, making them the master of couriers. Drones can be destroyed though, and they can be a pain to restore. A drone's health can only be depleted by physical means, meaning that if they are hit by things, they will take damage. They have no needs other than electricity. Something I think is interesting is they talk about drones taking damage from alien attacks and Sarlax. So I guess they are taking Sarlax from Star Wars, or maybe they will be different. I'm also curious if we will come across alien civilizations, which I think would be very interesting. All right, guys, so that really about sums it up for the first space blog that has come out. My opinions on this blog are it looks promising, but it is really going to have to come down to how everything is implemented. I'm very excited for everything mentioned in this blog post. Some of it is stuff we already know and have gotten a chance to play with, but it all looks really good. This would definitely be the biggest update in all of the Universe Sims history, and I'm all for it. Looking forward to it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. If you didn't enjoy it, then uh, I guess YouTube doesn't really care, so up to you what you do. I hope you enjoyed it, though. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about this. I do a pretty good job responding and I want to hear from all of you. If you are new to the channel and you are interested in staying up to date with the development of the universe sim, hit that subscribe button. Thank you all so very much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.